Hello and welcome to another edition of the Solid Rock Minnesota podcast, a place to swing by for a brief moment for some stories or news and things to ponder. It's a place to take a small pause from your busy life. So grab yourself some coffee or a mug of tea or a pop, as we like to call it here in the North Country, and kick back for a moment. Take a breather. We have four grown kids, and two of them currently live out of state. We have a son who just moved from California to Nashville this week, and a daughter who's in the military and stationed in Spokane, Washington. And then right now, at this moment, our oldest daughter and her family, they live about 30 miles north of us, and our son and his family, they've been living downstairs for about the past two years. I only mention the locations of all our kids because it's about to change once again. Our downstairs basement, which is kind of a walkout style, has never been truly vacated for more than about a year. Our kids all left home shortly after high school and college, and they started their own careers and families. And it was bittersweet to see them make their way into the adult world and be successful. But at the same time, it was a little sad to see them, at least some of them, living so far away from us. About 13 years ago, our oldest daughter and her husband with their five kids, and three of them had been recently adopted at the time, asked if they could move in downstairs. They were hoping for a little time to regroup and eventually buy a house and move to Duluth about 90 miles from here. Well, of course we agreed, and plans were made to finish off the downstairs into a separate dwelling for them. And it really pays to have a son-in-law who's a cabinet maker by trade, as not only was the downstairs finished off, but I got a whole new kitchen makeover upstairs. He came to me one day and said, you don't want the downstairs looking better than the upstairs kitchen, do you? And I kind of looked at him and said, well, I guess I didn't, not knowing where the conversation was going. He had decided to take all the upstairs kitchen cabinets and put them downstairs in their kitchen. So my upstairs kitchen was gutted and new cabinets were made and along with a wall being torn down to open up the kitchen to the living room and I had the most beautiful functional kitchen I have ever known. And they had a four bedroom place with a kitchen, bathroom and laundry. So they soon sold their place and moved in downstairs. They stayed here about two years and then they started looking for a place of their own. They now had six kids, as our daughter had gotten pregnant for the first time and had our grandson while they were here. It was at times structured chaos, and the noise was always a welcome to what would otherwise be a pretty quiet house if they weren't here. And the day they moved out, my son and his family asked if the downstairs was open for them to come live for a bit while they regrouped and found a place to buy. Of course, I was excited to fill the downstairs with noise and have the grandkids close to see daily. So they moved in the weekend after our daughter and family had moved out. There really wasn't a chance to miss the structured chaos. It was alive and well once again. My son and family stayed just about two years also and then packed up the now six kids and moved to North Carolina where he took a job. They bought a place and we got to visit a few times. And we were living the life of empty nesters for about a year. It was different compared to what we were used to over the past four or five years. There was no one here but the two of us. The downstairs was completely vacant and empty. I made a point of not going downstairs for anything because I would get really sad and longing for the noise and family. About a year into our empty nest, my daughter told me they were talking about moving back downstairs to save up and regroup once again. They were going to buy land closer to us and build. She asked if they could come live here again. Well, of course, we agreed they should come here and live for a while. Visions of noisy kids swinging in the backyard and dishes clanking downstairs in the kitchen. It was all coming back, and I was excited. So one Friday night, they pulled into the driveway with all their belongings packed up and ready to unload downstairs. I often believe them moving home the second time was more divine intervention than them wanting to leave Duluth. They had seven kids now, and my daughter was a few months pregnant. A few months after moving in, she started going into preterm labor with the baby. She wound up being hospitalized for several weeks to prevent her from going into labor early. Between my son-in-law and me, we managed to keep the seven kids and house functioning relatively well. We both had to work outside the house and at times we had to adjust our work schedules just to make sure one of us was around here at all times with the kids. 
Our grandson was born three and a half months early, and it was five months before our daughter and grandson would be able to come home from the NICU. And within a few months after that, they were moving out to their new home. My son-in-law had built a really nice place um, just 30 miles from here north of us on 40 acres of land. Them moving back home at that time was truly a God thing in my mind. Well, shortly after our daughter and family moved out, you guessed it, our son in North Carolina called and said he had accepted a job in Minnesota. He was asking if they could stay in the downstairs since it was now empty. Of course, once again, we agreed to let them move back. A few months of silence was about driving me crazy. The more the merrier was my thought. So soon they were pulling into the driveway late one night with their moving truck and all their belongings. The plan was, once again, to stay maybe two years to regroup and save up for a house. The past two years have been fun having them downstairs of us. There's always noise of kids chatting or playing soccer outside and dishes clanking in the kitchen. I've grown so accustomed to it over the past 13 years. And having daily and sometimes hourly visits from grandkids is what this grandma's life is all about. There's joy in all that noise and commotion. And both me and my best half wouldn't change a thing if it was just our decision. If it was our choice, we would build a big compound here on the farm and have all the kids and grandkids living here. But that's what headline news stories are made of, so maybe it isn't the best idea. The other day, our son came upstairs to visit. He was letting us know that he accepted a job offer in El Paso, Texas. They'll be leaving here for Texas in mid-September. While we knew they were here for just a short bit, we were hoping moving meant more like just moving a few miles away, not 1,424 miles to be exact. So now once again, we'll have three of our four kids and families a thousand miles or more away from us. I'm not sure why, but when he told me they were moving, it made me feel old. Life keeps moving on and changing and nothing ever stays the same. And change seems to come a little harder as I grow older. Well, I'm sad they're moving so far away. It's just another lesson in learning to let go of things that I have no control over. Once again, we'll have to learn to get used to the silence from the downstairs in the backyard. No more spontaneous visits from the grandkids coming up to visit or just play music together. Now we'll once again have to shut the windows if it looks like rain when we leave and lock the doors. No longer can we just text someone at home to do it for us. To be honest, I'm not looking forward to the once again empty downstairs, but it's what lies ahead for us. I keep telling myself I just need to endure a few months of being alone here during the day. In a few months, my best half will be retiring. And then we can fill the house with us shouting back and forth to each other because he doesn't have his hearing aids in. And I may get to the point of enjoying a few hours here and there of silence as much as he will too. Fortunately, my oldest daughter and family are close by and we can find time together as we always do. That hasn't changed. Who knows how it will all pan out with having kids all over the country. Retirement will hopefully mean traveling the country and stopping to see them along the way. As for the empty basement, well, just like Motel 6, we'll leave the light on. You just never know who will pull up in the driveway with all their belongings and need a place to stay. Thanks for listening to the Solid Rock Minnesota podcast. We're honored and grateful that you stopped by. If you'd like to receive one of our Solid Rock Minnesota bumper stickers, please message us here at the podcast or go to our website at www.solidrockminnesota.com. We'd love to send you one free of charge with no strings attached. Until next time, may you be filled with life, love, laughter, family, and friends, people who truly know you. Many blessings.